Hey everyone, welcome to Nerding IO. I'm JD, and today we're going to be looking at a free tool called Screenshot to Code. It's kind of like a no-code solution, but it's open source, and what it's using is ChatGPT Vision 4 to be able to take a screenshot and convert it into HTML, specifically using Tailwind CSS. All right, so let's go ahead and dive in. We're going to be looking at the Screenshot to Code repository. They have some interesting examples here. It's just a YouTube clone. They, you can notice that it has like a, a live preview. We're going to go through some of that. Uh, they do have this try it here, and that's what we're going to be using today before we actually go through the code. And so all you really need to do is bring your own API key and make sure that you have access to GPT for vision. If you haven't seen our previous video on GPT for vision, we have a, a couple different videos. Go ahead and check them out. They go through some basics and some pretty neat tips and tricks. All right, so what we're going to use for this is we're actually going to use our OpenAI API usage uh, graph and see how well it does with a screenshot of this. Um, I did track it costs about like 21 cents to run the generator, um, which is fairly good for, I think, the cost. I mean, if you look at it, actually tells you which image models and when it's using GPT-4, uh, the turbo actually might be from usage today. So we'll take a screenshot of this, and then what we're going to do is actually go to the example. So on this example, the first thing you need to do is go ahead and put in your OpenAI key and save that. And you can then click the uh, to upload your image. So while it's generating, you can actually watch it being built and see the code that it's streaming. So you can see right here, it's starting to pull different information in. Uh, it's even recognizing different color changes and states. And you can actually watch the code as it's streaming in. I thought this was really interesting and really cool. The other things to note is it has things like code comments, as well as the CDN scripts in order for it to work, and different views to try the responsiveness. I have noticed, though, that every single time this is a little bit different. That's fairly normal, I would say. Um, sometimes I've actually gotten the progress bar to show up. Um, and now that it's finished, what it did is it took those placeholder images and actually made them into images using Dolly. Real quick, if you haven't liked and subscribed already, please do. We also have a newsletter where you can get extra free resources. It helps more than you know. And with that, let's get back to it. So now we're going to jump back into the code and just kind of look at some of the things that they're using if you wanted to download this yourself. So you do need Python. You're going to need something called Poetry, which can be in installed via pip. Uh, and then you just need to run Yarn on your front end. So we're going to take a quick look at like the package to understand what's in the front end. And then specifically, we're going to look at the back end. Uh, so they're using Radix UI and then React uh, and then Tailwind as well. So, but for the back end, it's really interesting what they're using. So. Not only is it generating images by using Beautiful Soup, uh, which is actually using the um, the placeholder or placeholds.co, but then it's also generating the images which we saw after the fact using Dolly. Again, this this can be turned off with a flag, so it can be uh, either used or not used. And then what they're doing is, if you look at the prompt itself. It's, it's doing a couple different things. It's defining itself as a Tailwind developer. It does say that you're building uh, single page apps using Tailwind, HTML, and JavaScript. You might be given a screenshot. So that's pretty interesting that they're, they're explaining you might have a screenshot. Take the screenshot, make it look exact. It does talk about paying close attention to the background color, um, which we saw that in like even in the uh, the font changes and things like that. The uh, other things, it actually addresses the, the code comments, which I thought was pretty interesting. So 
giving it a little bit more than uh, like navigation and things like that and actually explaining different items. One thing that we could talk about here in this prompt is we could actually tell it to be uh, more compliant with WCAG. And that's one, again, we've covered this previously in both in the chat GPT vision side, but then also in looking at uh, a GPT-4 uh, assistant. So if you're interested in those videos, please uh, check at the very end. We'll, we'll make sure that they're linked. The other thing to note is that it's actually calling out the scripts that it wants to use. So the CDN for Tailwind CSS, as well as the font awesome icons. It's specifically calling out that version. Uh, and then it's telling it not to, or not only to return the full code, but also not to include any of the markdown. So basically when you're you're using the OpenAI dashboard, uh, it, it wraps everything in these markdown ticks so that it can actually display the code uh, for you visually. So I found that really interesting. So now that we have looked at the prompt, let's, there was one other thing I just wanted to go over and it's how it's actually getting called in the LLM. So it's actually using the GPT-4 vision preview in order to send that, uh, that message. So defining the model. And then right here we have our message, which is going to be coming through uh, as part of the, the prompt itself. Again, it's streaming, which we saw the code coming in live. So not only was it building a live preview, but it was also letting us uh, look at the code as we were reviewing it. So again, I thought this was a, a pretty cool kind of no code solution. Um, and with that, you know, I, w you could definitely expand on the prompt and, and really take it to wherever you want to go. All right, thanks everyone. Today we learned how to use screenshot to code. We went through their online tool as well as dug into their prompt, looked at some of the code that's being generated, which is Tailwind CSS. And if you haven't already, please remember to like and subscribe. We also have a free newsletter with different types of resources. And with that, happy nerding.